Nikola Motors was supposed to be the company that would revolutionize transportation. The founder Trevor Milton raised billions of dollars from top tier banks and landed a $2 billion partnership with General Motors. Milton even caught the eyes of basketball player Shaquille O'Neal. As one of the top 100 richest people in the world, Trevor Milton had more money than you can imagine. However, after years of promises and deceitful lies, Nikola Motors became a scam that was too big to survive. What was originally supposed to be a simple pump and dump ended up becoming one of the largest scams in US history. Trevor Milton wasn't just part of the hydrogen and electric vehicle revolution. He represented the future of the world, with breakthrough claims of record low hydrogen prices and a battery that would surpass Tesla. So how did Trevor Milton seemingly deceive the entire financial world? This is the story of how Milton went from a college dropout to the founder of a $34 billion fraud. Look at that. Looks like a fighter pilot jet. Look at that thing right there. Damn. Billionaire tycoon who promised to revolutionize the trucking industry with electric vehicles now indicted for fraud. Federal charges will be filed today against Trevor Milton. The founder of the electric truck company, Nikola, is being charged in an alleged scheme to defraud his investors. In 2008, Trevor Milton was an average college student at Utah Valley University. Little did he know that he would become one of the biggest fraudsters in modern history. Milton never read any books and frequently went to parties. All of a sudden, after just one semester of college, he dropped out in order to start his own company St. George Security and Alarm. It didn't take long for Milton's first business to grow. After overpromising on several metrics, he sold the alarm company for almost $2 million. Several months later, the buyer of Milton's alarm company found out that the company was practically worthless. Uh, within a few, within a few, uh, within about a year or two, I had sold it for almost two million dollars, and I thought I was like on top of the world. You know, I was like, "Oh, I'm like expert at this thing." This was the first time that Milton felt the exhilarating thrill of scamming. People often say that when it comes to scamming, once you start, you can't stop. Several lies and exaggerations already made Milton millions, and he recognized the potential. The next decade would mark the start of a roller coaster for Milton, from almost landing in jail multiple times to becoming an overnight billionaire. After selling the alarm business, Milton proceeded to create upillar.com, a website that allowed users to check out from multiple websites at once. According to an interview from Forbes, Milton claims that Upillar was the next Amazon. Milton even claims that the website had too much traffic to handle, and that it had over 80 million users per month. However, as quickly as Upillar rose, the company also fell. Potential investors quickly saw through Milton's scam and did not want to be involved. As a result, the house of cards fell and Milton ran out of money. So how did this next Amazon with massive traffic seemingly go bankrupt? In short, Upillar never had much traffic in the first place. According to a former Upillar employee, traffic on the site was incredibly low. This was a major fail for Milton, but he remains confident in his abilities. With Upillar, it was easy for people to see through his vaporware claims, but other sectors had some promising potential for scammers. In November of 2009, Milton founded D-Hybrid, a natural gas trucking company with disruptive potential. D-Hybrid allowed diesel trucks to run on natural gas through compressed natural gas conversion technology. From a trucking company's perspective, the transition to natural gas was a no-brainer. Diesel fuel usually costs $4 per gallon, whereas natural gas only costs roughly $1.27 to $2 per gallon. By replacing 70% of the diesel engine with natural gas, D-Hybrid promised to be able to cut fuel costs by 38%. Swift Transportation saw the potential and invested $2 million for 9% of D-Hybrid. In addition, Swift entered an agreement with D-Hybrid to convert up to 10 trucks to run on natural gas. Despite being initially impressed, it didn't take long for Swift to realize that D-Hybrid was a fraud. D-Hybrid failed to meet Swift's agreement to convert 10 diesel fuel trucks to natural gas. Furious about Milton's deceptive lies, Swift filed a lawsuit against D-Hybrid. It was at this moment that Milton knew he had to exit the business, so he decided to sell D-Hybrid, just like how he did with St. George Security and Alarm. By exaggerating on several metrics, Milton went into negotiations to sell D-Hybrid to Sustainable Power Group. Once again, Trevor Milton miserably failed. After just one month, Sustainable Power Group backed out of negotiations and sued D-Hybrid for significant misinterpretations. 
Milton hit rock bottom. He had no future prospects and also had two major lawsuits filed against him. A typical scammer would give up, but Milton was resilient. With two lawsuits under his belt, Milton created a new shell company named D-Hybrid Systems. By doing this, Milton was able to conceal any potential fraudulent issues by not having to disclose many of the problems with D-Hybrid. Finally, after months of hard work, Milton managed to sell D-Hybrid to Worthington Industries for $15.9 million. The sale of D-Hybrid was a narrow escape from two treacherous lawsuits. And although $15.9 million was a lot, it wasn't enough for Milton. He wanted to be filthy rich. To do this, he started the Ultimate Transportation Company. In 2014, Tesla Motors was a thriving business that showed the world that electric vehicles were the future. Two years prior, Tesla released the Model S, a major success that even beat the technology of the largest car manufacturers. The founders of Tesla named the company after Nikola Tesla. Seeing this, Trevor Milton obviously wanted to hop on the bandwagon, so he created a company using Mr. Tesla's first name, Nikola. In May of 2016, Milton unveiled the future of the trucking industry, a natural gas-powered semi-truck named the Nikola One. The pitch for the product seemed incredible. The first 5,000 pre-orders for the Nikola One would receive 5,000 gallons of natural gas for free. However, the problem was that there wasn't enough hype for the truck. In August of 2016, Milton decided to change things up. The Nikola One was now going to be a hydrogen truck that would be revealed in just 4 months. In Milton's own words, Nikola engineered the holy grail of the trucking industry. We are not aware of any zero emission truck in the world that can haul 80,000 pounds more than 1,000 miles and do it without stopping. Obviously, such breakthrough technology would take years to be developed, instead of just 4 months. Milton prepared a non-working truck with the word hydrogen written on the side. And in order to power the interior screen, he used a wire that extended below the stage. In the trucking world, this is called a pusher, because the truck literally has to be pushed in order to move. Of course, Milton couldn't let anyone know he was revealing a pusher. You're going to see that this is a real truck. This is not a pusher. You'll see it up on the screens. They're fully functioning screens. So we're going to try to keep people from uh, driving off. But this thing fully functions and works, which is really incredible. Um, this isn't just a pusher. Like a lot of vehicles that they unveil are just vehicles that don't actually function. Mm -hmm. It's a fully functioning uh, um, you know, vehicle, which is really incredible. You can go through. You can, you know, we can change out uh, pretty much everything we want, all the temperatures. I mean, this is a fully functioning vehicle. It's not just a... It's not just a pusher. That's what they call the, in the automotive world, a vehicle uh -huh. that they just push and it doesn't move. The Nikola One was great for boosting Nikola's valuation, but it wasn't quite enough. Milton needed to make it appear as if Nikola represented the future. In 2017, he released a Nikola all-electric utility vehicle named NZT. No, not that NZT. That's right, the Nikola NZT. The vehicle was quickly topped by Milton's biggest threat, Elon Musk. In December of 2017, Elon had an exciting announcement to make. He officially unveiled the Tesla Semi, a groundbreaking product that would change the landscape of trucking forever. The only problem was that the Tesla Semi made the Nikola One look like a joke, and the Nikola One wasn't even real. But it didn't end there. Milton thought that Tesla's Semi truck design was extremely similar to Nikola One's design. In fact, Tesla was using one of Nikola's quote unquote proprietary patents in his truck design, so why not try to capitalize on that patent? After Milton contacted Tesla about this, Elon Musk was furious. And, and what we did is we reached out to Tesla. So this is where a lot of Tesla people does not do, you know, investors don't know this or fans because of the reporting. We actually reached out and we said, hey, guys, we want to meet with you. Please meet with us. I, I, I want to work with you. I don't want to hurt you. I don't want to. We're in this together, you know, you know. You know, but the most important thing is we just don't want to use our patents or if you do, we want to work with you so you can do it the right way. And essentially their response was piss off. And that was the that was a really hard thing for us because their response was it was at first they wouldn't even respond. Then finally we had to get aggressive with them and then they just said, we don't give it, you know, screw you. Like we don't care. What are you gonna do? So, you know, what are you gonna do? In May of 2018, Milton sued Tesla for using six of Nikola's patents. Tesla replied by saying, It's patently obvious there is no merit to this lawsuit. We are not commenting because it is in the courts. The lawsuit speak for itself. During this time, investors became skeptical on the progress on the Nikola One and wanted to see the truck running. Milton was frustrated. The Nikola One was a disaster, and the truck couldn't even move. To solve this issue, he had an idea. Why not roll the truck down a hill? And that's exactly what Trevor Milton did. By shifting the camera angle on a rolling truck, Milton made it seem like the Nikola One was actually going uphill at certain times. 
A former Nikola employee stated, I asked Nikola's chief engineer Kevin how it was going to work, and he said they would tow it to the top of a super low grade hill and let it roll. In March of 2019, Milton decided that it was time to cash out and sold $70 million worth of Nikola stock. With this money in hand, Milton was ready to be filthy rich. Seven months later, he purchased the most expensive mansion in Utah for $32.5 million. The mansion included many thrilling activities, including a private trail for ATVs, horseback riding, fishing, private movie screening, and over 1,900 acres for exploring. Not only that, but the mansion had 16,800 square feet of property, 8 bedrooms, and 9 bathrooms. This luxurious spending was already a stretch for a pre-revenue company, but Milton still wanted more. In order to initiate more investor hype, Milton released several new vehicles. In 2019, Nikola unveiled an electric jet ski named the WAV, a military vehicle named Reckless, a non-existent hydrogen fueling station, a hydrogen electric truck named the Nikola 2, and an electric truck named the Nikola Trey. This new portfolio of vehicles was touted as the future of transportation, but it didn't have any legitimacy yet. As a result, Milton locked in a contract for 800 trucks with Bud Light Beer. At this point, you might think that Milton had enough of making false breakthrough claims, but like every scammer, he still craved for more. In November of 2019, Trevor Milton unveiled Nikola's ultimate secret sauce, an in-house battery. Milton claims that their battery had an energy density two times greater than Tesla's. In Trevor's own words, you're talking 600 plus mile range in a Model 3 Tesla. You're talking 50% less cost than lithium ion. You're talking mass adoption of zero emission vehicles. Could be worth hundreds of billions if owned by one company that we decided to share it with the competition for the greater good. A Twitter user asked Milton, is it actually real though, or is it another JOI scientific style breakthrough? Milton responded, it's real. I've seen it with my own eyes and watched them cycle. With such incredible batteries, Nikola was set to revolutionize the electric vehicle landscape. The only problem was that the company wasn't public on the stock exchange. Welcome to Nikola in Phoenix, Arizona. Let's get you guys inside and I'll show you around. In March of 2020, Nikola Motors reported that it was going public on a stock exchange via SPAC, or a Special Purpose Acquisition Company. Essentially, an SPAC uses a shell company to acquire a stake in another private company. This allows the private company to get away with meeting the typical requirements for going public. An acquisition company named Vecto IQ acquired a stake in Nikola Motors, which essentially took Nikola public. The valuation of Nikola stock quickly took off, and everyone that was initially in Nikola was now filthy rich. Milton began buying everything that money could buy, surfing at a vacation home with his friends, buying five private jets, donating to political candidates, and much more. Top executives at banks bought into the scam that Trevor Milton created and loaded into Nikola stock. Retail investors were hyped about the company. Even the country's largest pension fund bought into Nikola. Trevor's ego was through the roof, and as a result, he even went on to claim that he was beating Elon Musk. There's a lot of good about what you know what Tesla's done in the past to teach people that uh, that electric vehicles can work, but Nikola is the pioneer in heavy duty trucking, and Tesla is just really just following in our footsteps. And a lot of them, you know, a lot of them are uh, really believe that Elon is like this this great person that can do anything. And it's when they see someone else being able to actually beat him at what he's doing, they they hate that. We only focus on markets that actually create revenue in in any economy. And so I, it is a huge picture, there's no doubt. There's very few people that can out Elon in this world and that, and I'm, I'm one of them. There were major celebrations following Nikola Stock's exponential rise. Trevor Milton hosted parties with his friends, while the stock soared to a peak valuation of $34 billion. Their suspicious activity caused several retail investors to become skeptical, with myself included. In June of 2020, I was the first YouTuber to call out the company. I published a detailed video on why I thought Nikola Motors was a fraud. Back when I published the video, my opinion was definitely a contrarian stance and a bold move to make. Many viewers thought I was completely crazy, and others thought I was going to be sued for defamation. Despite most people thinking I was wrong, it was blatantly obvious to me that Nikola was a scam. However, who could blame them? At the same time that I published the video, Nikola's share price shot through the roof. Everybody's eyes were on the exponential stock price and not on the business itself. Many top influencers such as NBA player Shaquille O'Neal fell for the scam as well, and shamelessly promoted the company. On September 8, 2020, 
General Motors announced that it would be partnering with Nikola to manufacture a hydrogen electric pickup truck, the Nikola Badger. Everyone thought that the Badger was going to be revolutionary. On the day of the announcement, Nikola stock rose over 45% and GM stock also rose 9%. GM CEO Mary Barra went on to CNBC to say that GM had a lot of chemistry with Nikola. As we started to talk, we realized we shared a common uh, vision of the world of creating an all-electric future. The teams have already begun discussions and I, there's, there's really good chemistry between the technical teams. So we couldn't be more excited about working with Nikola. It all looked great, but a closer look showed that the partnership marked the end of Nikola. Instead of using Nikola's breakthrough hydrogen and electric technology, GM was using its own fuel cells and batteries. You know, in addition to all the technology that we're bringing in the value from both an Ultium and a Hydrotech technology perspective, there also then is, uh, we'll be doing the manufacturing and validation and engineering. So all of that comes together. And again, it's for the Badger, but it's also for the fuel cell, fuel cell technology for the Nikolai uh, products in the uh, class seven and eight truck business. This confirms that Nikola had no proprietary technology. If Nikola had the batteries and fuel cells that Milton promised, then why would Nikola ever use GM's horrible technology? Two days following the announcement, a research firm named Hindenburg Research unveiled all of Milton's darkest secrets. The report included recorded phone calls, text messages, private emails, and photographs all confirming that Nikola was a fraud. Just four days later, the SEC announced that it would investigate Hindenburg's claims. The scam was too big to continue. One week after the SEC's investigation, Trevor Milton officially resigned from Nikola Motors. The remaining Nikola employees worked hard to save the sinking ship. Copyright strikes were given to several influencers on YouTube, and I personally received a privacy complaint from Nikola Motors. Initially, Nikola was successful, and several channels were on the way to be taken down. However, with more attention on Nikola, the influencers prevailed, and YouTube took down Nikola's complaints. The prospects of Nikola Motors and Trevor Milton have both fizzled out into nothing. Shortly after Milton's resignation, General Motors cancelled its $2 billion investment in Nikola Motors. In addition, Milton's $2 billion lawsuit against Tesla was completely exposed by Tesla. Milton claims that he invented the design for the Nikola One in his basement, but further research from Tesla revealed that he actually just purchased it from someone else. On July 29, 2021, the US charged Trevor Milton with two counts of securities fraud and one count of wire fraud. Each criminal count carries a maximum of 20 to 25 years of prison. My name is Audrey Strauss. I am the United States Attorney for the Southern District of New York. Today, we announce charges against Trevor Milton, former CEO and executive chair of Nikola Corporation. We charge that Milton engaged in a scheme to enrich himself by making false and misleading statements to retail investors about the development of products and technology at Nikola Corporation. It sounds like justice is being served. However, we can't call it a victory yet. Hey, Mark Russell, Kim Brady, I have some very important guests for you guys today. However, exciting day. You might not believe this, but Trevor Milton may not go to jail. Milton pleaded not guilty to all counts of fraud, and he is already out of jail after paying a $100 million bail. Even with the hefty fine of $100 million, Milton still has plenty of money to spare, as he currently has a net worth of $1.1 billion. Not surprisingly, Milton has a superstar legal team that will help him avoid all charges against him. One of Milton's lawyers is Mark McCassey, a defense lawyer who represented Donald Trump and many top political leaders and corporate executives. McCassey was appointed as a judge by Ronald Reagan where he worked for 19 years, so he knows everything about the law. McCassey is literally the LeBron James of law, and if you don't believe me, his track record speaks for itself. In his last three federal trials, whose charges range from causing someone else to leave the world to securities fraud. Not only that, but over the past four years, not a single one of McCassey's clients has been sentenced to a single day of prison. In an email, McCassey stated, Trevor is innocent. There was no fraud. We're ready to fight this case at trial. In my opinion, because of his defense team, there is a decent chance Trevor won't go to jail for long, and he might not go at all. Trevor Milton has the best lawyers in the world, and he wouldn't plead not guilty unless if he thought that he could win the case at trial. Not only that, but with $1.1 billion to spare, Milton is far from being done. In the end, those with enough money can escape the law by having the best lawyers in town. The story of Trevor Milton is not just a story of deception and lies. His life story has served as an example of how the filthy rich can get away with plenty of sketchy activities. 
No matter what you think of Milton, he is likely still having fun in his private jet, horse riding at his mansion, watching movies in a private theater, and spending recklessly. Welcome to the life of a billionaire scammer. I got a couple comments today that I'm gonna address just for fun. Uh, first one, Trevor, you're a fraud. Okay, <laughs> sounds good, man. I guess all of our filings and the biggest investors in the world uh, must agree with you because they invested uh, in Nikola and they've seen our book. And we've got 900, almost $900 million in cash in our account right now. That's a lot of money. 